Hello and uh, welcome to this presentation about uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, simulation. Uh, the theme of this segment is accuracy and uh, convergence. My name is Reza Tabatabai. I'm a senior technical manager for the simulation products at Dassault Systems uh, SOLIDWORKS and I live in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. In this presentation, we put the definition of accuracy in the context uh, discussed here. Uh, we talk about the manual H method and the aut automatic H and uh, P adaptive methods. The definition of accuracy can be very broad. Uh, if you define accuracy as the real world behavior, that is a real prototype, versus the simulated behavior, uh, that is a virtual prototype, uh, then there are many contributors uh, to accuracy and uh, potentials for the discrepancy between real and uh, simulated. Uh, to get the two as close as possible, uh, the assumptions must be reasonable, uh, the model must be set up correctly, uh, the input values must be reliable, the material model must be representative, and uh, so on. In this video, our focus on accuracy is very narrow, namely this question. For a given setup, is the mesh accurate and have the results converged? So the idea is that because meshing is a mathematical tool of discretization and not a physical behavior in a particular problem, we ideally want a solution that is as mesh independent as possible. Uh, in this review of accuracy and convergence, we focus on a typical linear elastic stress analysis. When it comes to a nonlinear analysis, there are some additional factors to take into account that we do not discuss here. In this slide, we are going to contrast the H adaptive uh, with the P adaptive method. Let's assume that the stress response along an edge in the model is accurately represented by the black curve here. If you want to capture this variation using lines, uh, that is a first order polynomial, uh, the more number of elements you have along the path, the better the approximation of the curve. So in successive steps, uh, the program can increase the number of elements and the user can see in the mesh plot how the mesh is refined and in which locations. In the P method, the program does not uh, change uh, the uh, order, uh, the number of elements and the distribution of the original mesh. What it does is to increase the order of the polynomials, uh, capturing the behavior of each element more accurately. Uh, this happens in the background. There are parameters and graphs that can give you some info about convergence, but still, the H adaptive is a lot more uh, visual uh, to the user in terms of what happens than is the P adaptive. Let's talk about uh, the effect of uh, element size. Ideally, you want the solution to be as uh, mesh independent as possible, because as explained earlier, mesh is mathematics and not uh, physics. In general, with more elements uh, in a mesh, the solution is more uh, precise. There are more nodes that are available for calculating the response, and thus uh, the solution is more accurate. And more elements uh, means uh, smaller elements, so discretization error is minimized also. The practical limit where further mesh size reductions or a better element formulation add no benefit to the solution can be found in the process we call convergence. Even though meshing is a discretization of the geometry, a converged mesh is not only dependent on the geometry, but also the applied loads and the restraints. As an example, let's look at uh, the part here. Because load direction is different, the stress distribution is naturally different. So if you perform the H adaptive method uh, on this study, you get uh, mesh refinements in different regions, as you should. So you define a converged mesh for a given complete setup and not just a geometry. We discussed in a different video the concept of element type selection, including solid elements, shell elements, and beam elements. 
so in uh, special cases, uh, depending on the geometry and the specifics of your model, you may be able to get a more accurate solution even faster and more efficiently, uh, say with the shell or beam elements, uh, than try to uh, get convergence uh, for the same model meshed with typical solid elements. We also talked about uh, draft versus high quality elements uh, previously. Element shape can impact the accuracy of the element formulation and the resultant stresses. The more proportionate the shape of the element, the better. The more an element deviates uh, from the ideal shape, the higher the potential error. A stretched element that is an element with a high aspect ratio is less accurate. Element distortion uh, results uh, from placing too large an element into a tight curvature or a rapid transition from one size to another. To check uh, for distorted elements, the program has the so-called uh, Jacobian check. The features in the part or assembly can affect uh, discretization, the mesh and the resulting error. Sliver surfaces and the short edges are the most common causes uh, of uh, meshing problems. In assemblies, the relative position of parts can become an issue. If a compatible mesh does not work in these areas, you can use an incompatible mesh if appropriate. We covered that in more detail in the mixed meshing uh, video. Within SOLIDWORKS simulation for static studies under study properties adaptive tab, you have three options regarding convergence. Choosing none uh, does uh, not activate uh, any adaptive methods and you can use the H method manually. The other two options are automatic H adaptive and uh, automatic P adaptive. Now let's discuss each of these uh, three methods. In the manual H method, uh, you run a study, look at the results, identify the regions of high stress gradients. Uh, these are the regions where stresses uh, change uh, rapidly from one element to the next. Make a refinement in these regions. We suggest using uh, twice as many elements in these regions to make changes meaningful and rerun the analysis. We repeat this process until the stress values converge. That means they stabilize and do not uh, significantly change uh, with the uh, mesh uh, refinements. Uh, in this process, watch for element distortion if the local mesh size is much smaller than the global mesh size. Also, beware of singularity points. Examples are uh, very sharp corners or uh, right uh, underneath a point load uh, where the stress value is uh, theoretically very high but more realistic a little bit away from the singularity point. From a numerical standpoint, if you keep refining the mesh at the singularity point, the stress values keep rising, and you will not have uh, uh, a converged solution numerically. So you have to distinguish between an actual high stress point and a numerical singularity point. Here's an example of manual convergence uh, checking using the H method. You use uh, manual refinements and mesh controls in the regions of interest. In the convergence graph, the x-axis is the iterations and the y-axis is the maximum stress at the area of concern. In the real world, in a continuum, the stresses are continuous. Depending on the circumstances, you may have a rapid change, but nevertheless, they are continuous. This is not the case when you are doing finite element analysis on a discretized mesh. In the post-processing plot, though, on the stress plot, settings, fringe options, the default continuous option makes the color distribution transition smoothly for a better visual of the overall results. To examine the results from a convergence point of view, you can change the fringe option to discrete to better see the discontinuity in the calculated values. This is not an absolute test of convergence, but can show potential areas of concern. Also, change boundary options to mesh 
to see element edges in this examination. Energy norm error plot indicates the difference in stress between adjacent elements. Lower is better. You can activate this under the stress plot. This is not an absolute test of convergence, but a high error in areas of concern uh, should be investigated. Nodal results show the average result at each node based on the stress results calculated from the adjacent elements. On the stress plot definition tab, under advanced options, you can change the default node values to element values, uh, which shows the stress calculated for each element. The more gradual the change, the better. This is because more elements means uh, you are capturing the behavior at the element level more accurately and therefore with less uh, averaging. You can use automatic edge adaptive with both draft and high quality mesh. In this method, the program automatically refines the mesh in areas where calculated strain energy error is high. The strain energy norm is not the stress accuracy level. But a high level of accuracy in the convergence of the strain energy norm indicates uh, good res uh, stress results. Target accuracy defines the error threshold that causes a refinement loop. Default of 98% uh, is still fast. For accuracy bias, uh, set it to local. If your response is dominated by localized uh, stress hotspots, hot I'll set it to global if you are more interested in overall part stiffness, not stress peaks. If you aren't sure, leave uh, a default in the middle. If mesh uh, coarsening option is selected, the program can coarsen the mesh. That means use less elements in regions where strain energy error is low, indicating you did not need a fine mesh in the first place in that uh, region and can get away with a coarser mesh in that area. If this option is not checked, the program does not change the mesh in regions with low errors. The number of elements in this uh, uh, case uh, keeps increasing uh, in each adaptive loop. To have a feel about the uh, H-adaptive, here's an example starting with uh, four cases draft and high quality meshes and each with a coarse and a fine mesh. Running the H adaptive for the four cases, we see the results in the second row. Looking at the draft quality results, uh, the one in the first column uh, that started with a very coarse mesh, even after H adaptive iterations and convergence, the maximum stress is still a lot uh, less than the converged solution in the second column that started with a more reasonable mesh. Staying with the similar sizes but using the high quality elements uh, in columns uh, 3 and 4, you see a much uh, smaller discrepancy. Uh, this tells us that the starting mesh has an effect on the convergence, more so uh, for the draft quality mesh. Also, as we generally expect, high quality uh, mesh is always better than the draft quality. The variation y as a function of x can be formulated as a polynomial. Draft quality elements assume a first order or a linear variation. High quality elements assume a second order. The p-adaptive element formulation increases the order of the polynomial to higher orders than 2. The higher order the polynomial in the element formulation, the more accurate the results at the expense of more computational time. Also note that increasing the degree of polynomial one order, say from 1 to 2, improves accuracy a lot more than going, say, from 4 to 5. A few words about the implementation of the automatic p-adaptive method in SOLIDWORKS simulation. The starting mesh must be high quality. You cannot start from a draft quality mesh and run p-adaptive. The default convergence criteria tracks changes in total strain energy, root mean square or RMS of displacement and von Mises stress criterion less effective. The default settings are usually sufficient and the changing maximum P order, a number of loops, uh, is rarely needed. P 
elements in the current version start at second and go up to the fifth order. The program stops at the loops when one of the following conditions is met. The global criterion converges, local errors converge, or the maximum number of loops is reached. It is recommended to select the At Nodes option from the Jacobian Points menu in the Mesh Options dialog box before meshing a model when using the p-adaptive uh, method to solve uh, static problems. In the current version of the program, you can do h-adaptive and p-adaptive for static analysis of parts and assemblies meshed with solid elements. Adaptive meshing is available for the standard and curvature-based measure but not for the blended uh, curvature-based measure. The p-adaptive option is not supported for the no penetration contact, remote loads, or connectors. A couple of recommendations here. Start meshing with default mesh size and high quality elements. For uh, bonded assemblies uh, without uh, remote loads or connectors, use either H-adaptivity or P-adaptivity, ideally both, and uh, compare the results. If a Jacobian error occurs, a second run uh, with a different initial mesh size is warranted to avoid erroneous uh, high stresses. For assemblies uh, with no penetration contact, uh, remote loads or connectors, use H-adaptive or use manual H method with local mesh controls as needed. Let's uh, summarize what we reviewed. Accuracy should be viewed in context. There are other parameters in your setup and inputs that may be far more important in terms of the overall results uh, you get uh, than the uh, accuracy of the mesh per se. On the specific issue of uh, mesh accuracy, we looked at the examination of convergence using the manual H and adaptive H and uh, P methods. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, your interest in uh, Dassault Systems uh, SolidWorks uh, simulation products.